This news program is proudly brought to you by Paradise Foods, celebrating 90 years in PNG. COP28 Summit Delegation Saga continues. 2023 exam results launched. And Business Development Grant presented to Central and Gulf landowners. A very good evening. This is Friday's News. I'm Malcolm Waira. Thank you for joining us. Several media reports have shown a vast increase in the delegation claiming to attend the COP28 summit in Dubai from the 30th of November to the 12th of December, contradicting previous statements by the Minister for Environment, Conservation and Climate Change and CCDA's Acting General Manager for Monitoring, Reporting and Verification. The inconsistent listing went from 56 to 29, 29 delegates, then 127 to now 49 delegates, prompting a dismayed response from the Prime Minister as well. Prior to attending the COP28 summit in Dubai earlier this month, the Office of Environment, Conservation and Climate Change made a statement to the media confirming the number of delegates to attend the summit. We have uh, nine high-level delegates that will be attending and from the high-level team, it must also be noted because PM is attending as the head of the delegation, there's protocol and there's um, administration staff that goes with them. So for each of the ministers, state ministers, they are accorded protocol. So at least they have three to four people accompanying them, each of them. So uh, we are looking around the numbers of 40 that, um, that is inclusive of the high level team. A news article published yesterday stated that according to the United Nations Climate Change Office, there are reportedly 127 delegates who are attending the COP28. The article also showed the Prime Minister's unhappy response to his direct orders being defied. Following this article, a media release by the Minister for Environment, Conservation and Climate Change, Simon Kilepa, was issued in Dubai where the minister slams that the news article is unverified and the responsible paper must apologize for this. The 28th Conference of Parties, or COP28, is a climate change conference that involves all countries that signed the UN agreement in 1992 to assess the effects of and limit climate change. And PNG being a member is required to attend this important conference. Hence, such inconsistent dissemination of news and media releases from both the Environment, Conservation and Climate Change Department and the media should not be entertained. This newsroom will follow up on this regard. Francisca Anania, National MTV News. The Department of Education today launched the 2023 exam results for grade 10s and grade 12s in Port Moresby. As part of the formalities to launch the exam results for the academic year 2023, the Minister for Education, Jimmy Ugoro, has taken the initiative to launch the result for the grade 10s and 12s at midday today. Aira National School of Excellence, Paya Herman. <laughs> All these three medical students, thank you very much for your achievement today and congratulations. The grade 10 and 12 who have set for the national exam have been urged to go online and check the results. The Secretary for Education, Dr. Uke Kombra, have announced the top grade 10s and 12 schools in the country. For the grade 12 system schools, Paglum Adventist Secondary School topped the country, followed by Mount Hagen Secondary School on the second sport, while St. Charles Lawanga on the third sport. For the National High School, so Gary took the lead, followed by Caravet and the Passam National High School. For the private, Paradise PNG 
took the lead. For the Great Ten, St. Charles Lawanga, Marineville and Mount Hagen Secondary School have topped the country respectively, while PNG Paradise topped as the private school. Over 30,000 grade 12 students have set for the national exam, while over 70,000 grade 10 set for the 2023 national examination. In the meantime, grace period for the grade 12 is scheduled for the 12th to the 15th of December to make their final adjustments. Selection will be launched on the 21st of December for the 2024 academic year. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. After taking nearly three solid years, the Department of Education has finally launched the department's upgraded website. For the past 18 years, the Education Department was using the old website developed by its ICT division in 2005. According to the Secretary, Dr. Oke Komra, the upgrade of the website to a more modern authenticity will be more user-friendly for the stakeholders. The website will enable stakeholders to access and find information and data about important policies, programs, announcements and news about the national education system. The secretary made mention that the website will also host a number of important applications for teachers and public servants from the department to access. Staff from the Media and Communication and ICT Division have been challenged to continuously update the website with relevant and current information for users to access. The launching of the upgraded website also coincided with the Meeting Logger application, an application to streamline the process of documenting meeting. It will be used to capture key information, action items, decision and discussion during meetings. In addition, it will help support track action items and responsibilities ensuring that tasks are not forgotten or overlooked. Dr. Comber said it will also allow the team members to access meeting information when they are unable to attend. He highlighted that this application will complement and strengthen the decision that the department made to introduce paperless policy in August 2016. Gladys Kila, National MTV News. A new AOG agency primary school, which was built in Tonembu village in the South So LLG of Yanguru South Shia district in East Tipik province, was built purposely to align with the changes in the education curriculum from the outcome-based education to standard-based curriculum. The new Tonembu AOG primary school, which was officially opened yesterday, is now ready to accept students for next year. The initiative of converting the Tonembu Elementary into a primary school started a few years ago by the head of the elementary school, Mr. Isaac Wangi, who witnessed every day students walking for five to six kilometers to reach the nearest primary school, which affected their academic performance. Present at the opening ceremony were appointment officer, Mr. John Waken, CIPIC Teachers Association President, Simon Wangi Pari, Yanguru Sausia District Education Inspector, Mrs. Kambaki, Sauso LLG President Alois Ningi and other representatives from the AOG Church. Ms. Kambaki said the new Tonembu AOG Primary School was given a school code with eight teaching positions already by the Education Division. It is one of the three schools recognized this year, while others are yet to be given code and teaching positions. This school will be the feeder school to the new Munji Junior High School, which is on the process of receiving code and teaching positions. Hence, the youths and people of Tonembu village are urged to look after the service for the benefit of everyone. The Paradise Foods Limited, in celebration of its 90th anniversary in Papua New Guinea, ran its Win Big 1 Million Kina promotion that concluded today with the announcement of the winner of its major prize, a Ford Wild Track in the Southern Region. The winner of the major prize of Southern Region was announced at the Soap and Shop Central Waigani in Port Moresby. The promotion was activated nationwide from September to November of 2023 with 30,000 kina worth of prizes drawn weekly throughout the country. 
The Win Big Major draw was conducted today in all four regions. We've had a total entry count of 676,605 entries throughout the country. Southern with 203,000 plus. Momo said we've had 210,000 entries. NGA 163,000 entries. And the Highlands region 99,000 plus entries. Thank you to all of our con consumers and our pro um, so this is happening right throughout the country. Uh, in Leh, you can meet them down at Eriku, Papindo, in for, uh, NGI, um, in Kokopo, K Central, um, at Mount Hagen, at Teninga Dobel, and for us here in Port Mosby, Southern Region, it's Stop and Shop Central. Thank you. The Southern Region major draw was conducted by the National Capital District Metropolitan Superintendent Silva Sika. The winner was announced by the Paradise Foods Limited Southern Region Regional Key you. Accounts Manager Walters Daddy, Amogana. Your number is 799. Six seven one six three. Congratulations to Jude Daki. The category manager of Paradise Foods Limited, Rebecca Uji, elaborates on the process after the announcement of the winner. So the process from here on is um, she will be he or she will be contacted by our office only by our phone line, um, Paradise Foods office, and then from there we've got a, a process where she will come in the handover will be done and then she'll be able to drive away with her prize. It's as easy as that. We, um, Thank you so much to everyone that participated. We had over 670,000 entries that came in around the country. And from Southern Region alone, we had over 2,000 entries that came in. So this came in from NCD, from Alatau, from Popondeta, from Kiunga, and from Karama and Central as well. Malinta Yopolo, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News. The government will provide the landowners of the impacted areas in Gulf and Central Province a 60 million kina business development grant next year, 2024. The grant will be subsequent for the next nine years. This was revealed by the Minister for Petroleum and Energy, Karen Gakua, yesterday while announcing the ministerial determination on identification of landowner, landowner beneficiaries of Central and Gulf Province in Port Moresby. The minister pointed out that there will be a setup of business organizations, structures and infrastructures to prepare the landowners to participate in any business spin-off that might come from the Papua LNG project. Kua stressed that the grant for 2024 will be used purely for business development, while the grant for the subsequent nine years can be used on other developments in their districts and provinces. Uh, we've done a similar thing for the PNG LNG. Uh, project already, such a grant, we call it um, business development grant, uh, infrastructure development grant, high impact project, all of this. So what we have done, and this is an important point I have to clarify, we have used exactly the same formula for government grant that we've used in PNG LNG for Papua LNG. So no more, no less, precisely the same. That's the way we've worked it out. So I want to assure the people impacted by the Papua LNG that they're not going to be treated any less or any better than the impacted people in PNG LNG. They'll be treated the very same. Kua said the construction of the Papua LNG project will run for four years and end in late 2028, and the construction of Pinyang Gas Project in the Western Province will begin in 2029 for another four years. So we're looking at confirmed, confirmed, eight years of construction period. Um, and that eight years is a long time. So we are working, also working on other projects too right now hoping to hopefully uh, sign them up so that when Pinyang construction is completed, we've got another one or two projects already signed up to connect from there. So instead of eight years of construction, we can possibly extend it to 12 years or 10 years, 11 years, 12 years, 13 years of continuous construction. Depends on how we negotiate and sign up future projects. Malinta Yopolo, National MTV News. 
the governor of New Ireland province, Sir Julius Chen, expressed his disappointment and disgust on the 2024 national government allocation budget for his province on Tuesday, 5th of December in KVN. The Joint Provincial Planning and Budgetary Committee and the Provincial Implementation Committee met with the New Ireland Provincial Executive Council to discuss the budget allocation chaired by Sir Julius Chen. In a statement, it was said that the national government passed its so-called record budget of 27 billion kina last week, giving the New Ireland province 127 million 42,578 kina. This was a reduction of what they received last year of 162 million 370,564 kina. The provincial executive council expressed that it was a slap in the face of the landowners in the slap, slap in the face for the landowners of Lihir and Simberi Islands, who contributed almost 35% to the national government basket through its gold exportation, including the New Islanders' contribution of 30% to the country's GDP. Sir Julius, with much disappointment, stated, and I quote, the unfair treatment that we get from the national government is pushing us to fight for autonomy and to support Bonneville's fight for independence. As a step further to enhancing learning in the digital age, today saw the signing of a memorandum of understanding between the Telecom Foundation and the Southern Highlands Provincial Education Division in Port Moresby. Present to witness the momentous occasion was the officer in charge for Telecom Foundation, Benjamin Moses, who mentioned that they have signed a similar agreement with the Western Islands province prior and expressed great anticipation to be working with the Southern Islands Provincial Education Division through this MOU. We have been signing a couple of uh, MOU this year with Western Islands Education uh, Division and this is the uh, second time we are going to sign MOU with Southern Islands Division of Education and I'm very happy to be part and parcel of Southern Islands Division of Education. We have already set a network there, so why not we hold hands and work together and deliver the expected service in the schools in Southern Islands Province. I'm happy to be at the back of you to work together to deliver the basic clean IT solutions to our schools in Southern Islands. The MOU promises assistance to selected schools by the division in the province from the Telecom Foundation, especially with the foundation's clean IT program installation. Welcoming the partnership was the acting education advisor for Southern Islands province, Robert Kuim, who expressed that any help to the education division in the province is well appreciated. Uh, in certain, back in Southern Islands, we have uh, problems, problems in the in the section, the uh, in the in the problems in in the developments in infrastructure developments, programs in the student learning, problems in uh, teachers teaching resources, materials, whatever things that we can fast track or we can take on board for a good of the division. Telecom Foundation to date notes assisting around 1,000 plus students as well as teachers around the country to have access to internet through its ongoing clean IT program. Edson Kuso, National MTV News. During the MOU signing, the head teacher to the Wangai Primary School in the Southern Highlands Province, Mr. Pareka Kawa, highlighted the struggles of schools outside of the urban setting. Like uh, school senior develop with the IT system, learning computers, laptops in the school level, while remote schools completely some are starting to pick up, but majority are still yet to come in. The TFF that money that is coming in is <clears throat> insufficient to cater for such an infrastructure. Most of the money goes to the basic materials that we are using. In remote schools, we are using gen sets. That's not. So we have to at least spend the 200 kin every week for fuel and then the basic materials. And uh, to uh, cater for infrastructure, there's hardly any money. St. John Ambulance recently received a donation of 20 computers 
from the Lighthouse International in partnership with NewNet to be utilized for ambulance education. The donation will support the training of ambulance officers and ambulance clinicians facilitating interactive learning modules, hosting educational and clinical resources, and enhancing the quality of training at their ambulance academy in Port Mosby. CEO of NewNet David Valentine said NewNet PNG has been assisting Lighthouse International with identifying recipients for its digital infrastructure program. In the Pacific and both companies expressed great pleasure in assisting the St. John Ambulance Training Academy with this computer donation. St. John Director of Clinical Systems, Dr. Arabella Koliwan, expressed sincere gratitude on behalf of St. John Papua New Guinea for this generous donation of 20 computers. These computers not only impact the organization but will have far-reaching impacts for the communities St. John Ambulance serve as they strive to maintain high standards of education and service delivery in the pre-hospital space. Louis Mangu, National MTV News. Now to the next farm market report. The Kina closed unchanged at 0.2685 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.2610 US dollars, 0.3926 Australian dollars, 0.2342 Euro, 37.26 Japanese yen. Looking at the commodity prices, at New York close, gold is trading higher, coffee closed higher, cocoa closed higher, copra closed unchanged, palm oil closed higher, crude oil is trading higher, copper closed lower. On the stock market, the Dow Jones closed higher, the SX200 is trading higher, the All Ordinaries is trading higher. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News. The Intake 5 Youths of Urban Youth Employment Project from Port Mosby, Northeast, South and Northwest commenced their 110 days training journey on the 5th of December. Three hundred and thirty-six youths in the intake five of the Urban Youth Employment Project 2 kicked off their training journey on a high note. These youths were part of the 2,626 youths who were enumerated in September this year for intakes 5, 6, 7, 11 and 12 going into 2024. Following a citywide registration from the 6th to 10th October of this year, the youths gathered on 20th November for the orientation. I was doing my grade 10 at Ford, but I didn't afford to pay for my school fees, so I left it and I decided to join the project. I see the project as it gives me a opportunity to help me get employed, so after getting employed, I can further my studies. Come here because he likes him job and he come here. Thank you to Lord Benny Project, the side law, Governor Billy Powers, Lord helping me plan and supporting me plan. I'm a Tony Ebenet, I like to make it easy, long give open your account, long and BSP. Top thank you, Law World Bank, um, Ebenet Project, na Governor Powers Park of the Help Young Tall Youths will cast up nothing, nothing in your house. The Urban Youth Employment Project is rolled out by the National Capital District Commission and championed by the NCDC Governor Powers Pakop. The project is about giving second chance to disengaged youths, including those in the Motokoita District, Central Province. The training for the youths in the project includes basic life skills, hands-on civil works that contributes to NCDC's infrastructure development, on-job training through internship and TVET courses, for some based mostly on the selection criteria of the selected institution. Malinta Yopolo, National MTV News. A painted piece called Walking to Equality was presented to the European Union by the United Nations Women 
showing the close partnership both agencies share in advocating for equal representation in PNG. This presentation took place yesterday at the BSB House in Port Mosby yesterday. The United Nations Woman is a leading woman empowerment and gender equality advocate agency in PNG that inspires various artistic presentations from Papua New Guineans every year where a lot of women participate. During the United Four Equal Summit and Spotlight Closure event last week, a piece called Walking to Equality was painted, igniting an interesting turn of events following after. We want this to inspire conversation. We would like it to inspire uh, more innovation about the transformation that we'd like to see in the lives of women and girls in Papua New Guinea. Artist of the beautiful painting, Miss Kylie Mera Kapiri, explained her inspiration to paint the piece. My name is Kylie Mera Kapiri. Um, I'm the artist behind this beautiful piece here. Um, I, I painted this painting um, to represent the uh, struggles a woman go through in Papua New Guinea. I have two stories to talk about, the background and the illustration in front. Present to receive the painting was European Union Ambassador to PNG, His Excellency Jacques Fredin, who applauded UN women's efforts in the country, and Miss Kylie for an impressive work promoting both European Union and UN women's core role, which is gender equality. And I would like to thank UN Women for the leadership and coordination of this program in Papua New Guinea. I think you did an impressive work. It's an unachieved work because it's a big work and there are many challenges. And at the end, I would like to thank the artist, Kapiri Kukimera, for this donation to the European Union delegation that reminds her of our core value. Francisca Anania, National MTV News. Students at Sunnyside Christian School, unlike any other kindergarten school in Port Mosby, are being taught lamb phonics and phonic phonograms. According to the director, the children are taught the Australian standard of education. The Sunnyside Christian School, having celebrated its inaugural graduation ceremony on Tuesday at Port Mosby's Nature Park, director of the school said that the students are taught different to any other school in Port Mosby. The pillar is lamb phonics. We pride ourselves in offering lamb phonics to our students. There is two things, lamb phonics and jolly phonics. Most of the schools in Port Mosby, they are learning jolly phonics. But Sunnyside is the only school in Port Mosby, I guess is learning lamb phonics. Also alluding to the director of the school was lamb phonics instructor Alberta Kapori, who explained what the students are taught at Sunnyside Christian School. Phonics is made up of vowels and consonant letters, 26 single phonograms, 32 multiple phonograms, successive 17 phonograms. Altogether, we have 75 phonograms. You may wonder what is phonograms. Phonograms are unit of sounds. Sounds can be heard or spoken. Out of that 75 phonograms, we have 42 sounds, 25 consonant sounds, and 17 vowel sounds. Director Frank Goy said the school does not only provide academic knowledge in maths, English and science, but also teach the young children Christian values as well. Early learners into right pathways of development, encoding and decoding words and sounds correctly. Some of these students sitting down here, some parents have experienced it. You try to spe speak your own English, the old English to your children right here. They will correct you. Yes, some parents have been corrected by their children. The school, meanwhile, will have its first grade three students next year who are the graduating students of the class of 2023. The Taitage village in the upper, upper Wage LLG will
will come alive on the 15th to the 17th of December 2023, with seven traditional dancing groups already part ready to participate in the Wage Cultural Festival. The festival was initiated to purposely unite warring tribes in Kandab district. According to the festival coordinator Yonde Yowan, tribal fights, law and order issues have been a common topic in the Highlands region. He said by hosting such events, it will help unite warring tribes to put aside their differences and encourage tribes to instill peace amongst themselves. The Wage Festival is the, is the first of its kind to be hosted and recognized by the National Cultural Commission. National MTV News continues after the break with Chukai Sports. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. SP Brewery Limited is supporting the West New Britain provincial government through its 20-day human rights activism program by raising awareness on violence through its peace march in Kimbe Town this morning that will kick off the West New Britain Super 7s rugby tournament. In conjunction with the 20-day human rights activism program, SP Brewery and other corporate sponsors for the tournament including New Britain Palm Oil Limited, and New Guinea and the National Gaming Control Board are playing a proactive role in showcasing its support by sponsoring the Peace March with t-shirts, banners and flyers and staging of the Super 7s Rugby Tournament. Whilst the Port Moresby Capital Rugby Union is assisting the tournament by providing training for the West New Britain Rugby Union officials. Their partnership with the West New Britain Provincial Government through the WNB Committee Development Arm saw the Peace March take place this morning starting from the street in front of the Kimbe General Hospital and finishing at the Mutuvel Stadium. The West New Britain Super 7s Rugby Tournament starts today, the 8th, to the 10th of this month. The tournament aims to raise awareness on violence and promote peace and order in West New Britain province through Rugby 7s. Claire Mauta, Chukai Sports. The 18th edition of the annual Governor's Rugby League Cup was launched on Thursday at the NCDC City Hall in Port Moresby. National Capital District Governor Powers Pakop has committed 300,000 kina for the annual Governor's Cup in NCD. The 2023 Governor's Cup will see 64 men's team and six women's team, setting a new record of the tournament with a total of 70 participating teams. The Governor's Cup will kick off on Monday next week. That ends Chukai Sports. The Money Plus weather report is next. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. The weather forecast for the next 24 hours. For the southern region, Port Mosby City mostly fine. Daru, mostly fine. Keraman Alota, partly cloudy with a shower or two. Popondeta, cloudy with few showers. Looking at the Momasi region, Lay City, partly cloudy with a shower or two. Medeng, Wiwek and Vanimo, cloudy with few showers. To the New Guinea Islands region, Lorenga and Kavieng, cloudy with thundery rain showers. Kokopo Rabaul and Kimbe, cloudy with, with few showers. Buka, cloudy with some showers. To the Highlands region, Mount Tagen City, evening showers and possible thunderstorms, easing into cloudy periods, then morning fog patches. Goroka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabeg, evening showers, easing into cloudy periods, then morning fog patches. Looking at the small ship's forecast, waters of southern PNG Indonesian border to Daru to Kiwai Islands to Kerama to Yul Island to Hood Point to Samari Islands, seas 1 to 2 meters. Waters of Samari Island to Cape Vogel to Eastern and Western Milan Bay Islands, seas 2 to 3 meters. 
what is north of Cape Vogel to Huen Gulf to Finchafen, 6.5 to 1 meters. What is of Finchafen through VTS Dempia Strait to Sia Silong Islands, 6.5 to 1.3 meters. What is of Long Island to Medang to Wewek to Vanimo and Northern PNG Indonesian border, 6.1 to 2 meters. What is of Manus and its western group of islands, 6.5 to 1.3 meters. What is of East and West Britain to New Island, 6.5 to 1.5 meters. What is of Bougainville, 6.5 to 1.5 meters. Looking at the ocean forecast, coral seas, seas slight to moderate, south to southeast winds of 10 to 20 knots. Solomon seas, moderate to rough, southwest to westerly winds of 15 to 33 knots. Bismarck seas, seas slight to moderate, northwest winds of 10 to 20 knots. Pacific Ocean, seas slight to moderate, northwest winds of 10 to 20 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that wraps up the news, sports and weather for Friday the 8th of December 2023. From all of us here, pleasant viewing. Good night. This news program was proudly brought to you by Paradise Foods, celebrating 90 years in PNG.